Pong Tennis is a simple game to play, as long as you have the correct equipment and a basic knowledge of racket sports. Each player must use a racquetball racket. A tennis racket may be used for recreational play, but is not allowed in official competition. Most good players prefer the control of a smaller racket. The ball used is a racquetball, and the blue and green colored balls are the most common. The game is played on a regulation sized tennis court, and is most effective on a hard court. Because the game is played with a racquetball, courts with typical chain link fences can be difficult to play on. The ball is much smaller than a tennis ball and will often travel through the fence openings. Indoor courts or outdoor courts with windscreens are best suited for pong tennis. Points are awarded as they are in tennis. A ball cannot bounce twice, must cross the net, and also must land in play. However, unlike tennis, scoring is point by point similar to that of ping pong. For example, if you score a point, you get one. If you score again, it's two. Whichever player scores last, serves next. So, also unlike tennis, if you score, you get to serve. If you don't score, you give up the serve. You do not have to serve to score. The first player to reach 21 points and win by two wins the set. Players will often play best of three sets, and competitions are played in this format. So, for example, if player A starts the game serving, he wins the first point, he is up one to nothing over player B. Player A then continues to serve. If player A serves and loses the point, he and player B are then tied at one, and player B is now serving. Players switch sides of the court after every ten points. The general way to play the game is simple. Keep your opponent from hitting the ball or make them make a mistake. Doing this will win points. Now, there are three very unique rules to Pong Tennis, unlike any other racket sport. First, the ball may not be struck above the shoulder at any time. This makes jumping a very important part of the game as it can create a stronger angle over the net. If the ball is struck above the shoulder, a fault is called and a point and serve is awarded to the other player. The second rule is that no player may hit a ball with any part of their body across the service line. And that's the width line running across the entire middle of the court. If a player crosses to hit a ball, a fault is called and a point and serve is awarded to the other player. The last rule that's unique to Pong Tennis, which ties into the second rule, is that a ball may not bounce for the second time before the service line. If it does, it is ruled out. For example, the ball struck over the net and bounces just on the other side of it. It then bounces again before the service line. That ball is called out. Serving and returning is obviously a crucial part of the game. Often at the beginning of the game, a coin or racket toss decides who will serve first. The game begins with the server starting on the right side behind the baseline as in tennis. The small dash on the baseline or the center line in the middle of the court splits the serving area in half. Players must be to the right or left of that line, depending on where they're serving from. After each point, the server switches sides. It will always alternate right or left during a set, regardless of who is serving. So if player A serves from the right and loses the point, player B now gets to serve from the left side, and it will always alternate back and forth. The goal of the serve is to strike the ball to the opposite service box, just as in tennis and that's where the ball must land once. The big difference is, is that the ball must be bounced by the server before they hit it. This is much different than tennis as normally the ball is thrown into the air. This is more close to ping pong where the ball must be bounced once on that side before you hit it. The server must also, as during play, hit the ball below his shoulder. Jumping is also a common technique in pong tennis serving as you can create a greater downward angle and be able to hit the ball much harder. Striking the ball in front of the baseline is permitted as long as no part of the server's body or feet touched in front of or including the baseline during any of the serving motion. The server has two chances to get in his serve, just as in tennis. If he misses both times, it is called a double fault and a point and serve is awarded to the other player. Players switch ends, as mentioned, after every 10 total points. For example, if the score is 4 to 6, the players switch. If it's 10 to nothing, the players switch. Then again, if the score is 15 to 5, the players switch. 
The returner also has rules to follow. They must stay behind their baseline until the ball is struck by the server. Because a racquetball does not spin as much as a tennis ball, and you must strike the ball below the shoulder, second serves often cannot be hit with much force. The two main types of second serves are the lob and the drop serve. The lob serve is hit high and bounces at the back of the service box. If it hits with the right amount of height, the ball will force the returner to play deep in their own court. Hitting it too high allows the player to run in and cut the ball off right after it bounces. The drop serve is a very tough serve to master. The ball is tapped with a low trajectory and a slow velocity so it barely crosses the net. The ball may not bounce twice in the service box, as mentioned before, so it has to have enough speed to cross. The idea is to make the ball bounce a second time just after the service line, but in a short amount of time. Because the returner cannot cross the baseline until after the ball is struck, they are forced to play the serve, if it is executed well, on the run, close to the net, and with the ball low down around their ankles. A great drop serve almost always forces a weak return and is sometimes used on a first serve. With all of this, you should be able to get started on your first game of Pong Tennis.